Okay, with these two problems here, we want to find the total area of the region between the curve and the x-axis. And when you're looking for uh, something where you're looking for total area, we want to look at the absolute value. It's like distance. How far did we drive in total? Sometimes we went in a negative direction, sometimes we went in a positive direction, but the odometer always rolls forward. Okay, same thing here. And so to set these up, all you need to do is look at a definite integral for these guys. So it's going to look like something like this. If I want to know the total area of the region between the curves, then I'm going to look at the area right here of um, x squared minus 6x plus 9. And I'm going to look at it from 2 to 4. Now, one thing that I would encourage you to do is just catch a real quick look at what this graph looks like. Because if there's any area under the curve, we need to know exactly where that happens. Because if we cross over the x-axis, we'll need to split our integral up into two pieces. I think, though, on this one, we're going to be OK. Because 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 12 is um, negative 8. Plus 9 is 1. That's positive. 4 squared is 16 minus 6 times x. Uh, that's 24, that's going to be negative. So somewhere in there, we're crossing the x-axis. So what we're going to end up having to do is figure out where x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to 0. And the easiest way to do that is to factor it out. So you're looking at a situation where, oh, this one's, okay, this one's not too bad. You're looking at a situation where when you factor it, set the pieces equal to zero, and then look at the interval that you're on. Well, in this case, when x equals three, uh, we cross the x-axis. So what we want to do then is we want to split this integral into two pieces and look at the absolute value of each piece. We're going to look at the integral from two to three of x squared minus six x plus nine. plus the integral from 3 to 4 of uh, x squared plus 6x plus 9. So these these are the two things that we're looking at. So so let's just look at let's look at this guy. Derivative of what gives me this? Derivative of what thing? Well, if I have x squared here, then I had to have had an x to the third, okay? because the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Now, I just need 1x squared, so I'm going to divide by 3, and that gets my 3's to cancel. So the derivative of this now is x squared. Put the 3 in the front, subtract 1. 3 times 1 third x squared is x squared, OK? Minus. Now, 6x, I'm going to have something x squared 2 times what? is 6. In that case, it's going to be 3. And then lastly, if I have 9, that's like saying times x to the 0. So when I add 1 to 0, I'm going to end up with 9x. Okay, so this is the function that I'm working with. And now I'm going to evaluate that in two separate spots from 2 to 3 and from 3 to 4. And I'm going to take the absolute value of each answer. So I'm just going to write that right here. I'm going to have x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared plus 9x evaluated from 2 to 3. Absolute value of that plus the same thing over here. x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared plus 9x evaluated from 3 to four. Okay. So how do you do this? Well, you just substitute in your stop minus your start. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop on this first guy. I stop at three. So what I'm going to end up with here is uh, three cubed over three minus three times three squared 
plus 9 times 3 um, times 3 and then I'm going to subtract I want to subtract where I stop which is at 2 so this is going to be 2 cubed over 3 uh, minus 3 times 2 squared plus 9 times 2 so I'm going to subtract those guys, okay? And uh, I'm going to pause this. I'm going to punch it into my calculator, and uh, and we'll finish this up, and we'll see if we matched answers for the first integral. All right, so right here for all of this, I get a one third. So for this guy right here, I get one third, and we're going to add, and it's positive. Absolute value of one third to one third, and we're going to add it to this guy right here. Well, we worked out. We've already worked out the three cubed part. That's that's this top guy right here. Well, he is now the start of my next integral. So I'm going to do the stop, which is four. The stop, which is four, minus the start, which is three. Okay, so it's the exact same process. I'm going to have four cubed minus three times four squared plus nine times four minus and then I'm going to put in the three which is exactly what I got right here so I don't even need to work it out again I've already got it and so it's going to be three cubed that needs to be four cubed over three three cubed. wow this is that's bad uh, let me just move this guy down. Four, four cubed over three. All right, here we go. For real, three cubed over three. Minus three times three squared. Plus nine times three. Okay, subtract that, and we'll get and we'll get the second uh, value that we need. That's part of our answer. So I'm going to pause, I'm going to do my math, and we'll see if we match. All right, for this guy, I also got a positive one-third. So when we look at total area then, when we look at total area, what we're going to do is we're going to take the first one-third we got and add it to the second one-third we got, and that will give us total area. And remember, keep in mind, total area is really, really similar to absolute value. It's always positive. It turns out that both of these pieces were above x-axis. They're both positive, okay? Um, quite a few steps there, but not too bad. And as it turns out with this graph, if you look, um, it's also possible on this graph, because it looks something like this, that we could have gone ahead and gone from 2 to 4 and done it in one step. But sometimes when you do that, if you're not paying attention to what's going on, you could end up having, adding in a negative number instead of taking the absolute value of that negative number. So this is good practice for us to have to find those things so that when we're looking for total area, we're always adding positive things. All right, let's look here at number eight. We want to find the total area of the region under x squared plus one from zero to one. I know for a fact that that bad boy is all positive. So this integral is going to go from zero to one it's going to be x squared plus 1 dx. And I just need to ask myself, hey, derivative of what is x squared? And we know that it's going to have to be something x cubed because it's going to end up being 3 minus 1, which gets me x squared. Now, to have just a 1 here, I need to put a 3 underneath. And when I do that, when I take derivative of uh, 1 third x cubed, I get x squared. Also, the antiderivative of 1, the derivative of what is 1, is just simply x. Remember, there's a 0 in there as an exponent on my x. Anything to the 0 power is 1. All right, And we're going to evaluate this from 0 to 1. So it's where I stop minus where I start. Stop minus start. So this is going to be 1 cubed over 3 plus 1 minus... 
And anytime you subtract, it's just a good idea to put parentheses in. Minus 0 cubed over 3 plus 0. All right, so here you go. This is what we've got. And this is going to be 1 over 3 plus 3 over 3, which is 4 thirds. There's the area under this curve from 0 to 1. This guy happens to look like this. And we're going we're going from 0 to 1. So that that makes sense, okay? Question 7, practice it. Try it a couple times. Can you reproduce the same answer on your own? Can you get all your math uh, parts right? And that's the challenge. So see if you can work it out as well uh, and get what I got.